and welcome back to another video of Medic Notes. This video will be on respiratory examination in children. So first, place the child in supine position or the position they are comfortable with. Then, we do examination of the anterior chest before proceeding to examine the back. So first, overall, look at their general appearance, how is their general activity and mental status, whether, whether they are alert and conscious or not. Any signs of respiratory distress, evidenced by nasal flaring, Usage of accessory muscle, like sternocleidomastoid muscle. Tachypnea, which is fast respiratory rate. Grunting, or other abnormal breathing pattern. And also if there is any cyanosis, where there is bluish discoloration of the skin. If the child is coughing, listen to the character of the cough, and also whether there is any added sounds, such as strider or wheezing. Listen to the cry and speech of the child. Look for bedside equipment or apparatus such as nebulizer, oxygen, SPO2 monitoring, sputum port, or any big floor meter. Assess the general growth parameters, whether there is any failure to thrive or short stature, and also plot the growth charts if indicated. Lastly, look for any presence of dysmorphic features seen on the child. That's for general appearance. Next, we can look at the hands and the fingers. So look for any signs of finger clubbing or peripheral cyanosis. For the pulse, check the pulse rate and also assess whether there is any bounding pulse which may be present in CO2 retention. Skin changes such as eczema may be present in a child who has asthma. And also look at the BCG scar. Next, we can look at the face of the child. Assess the lips and tongue to look for central cyanosis. And also check whether there is any cleft lip or palate. For the neck, Cervical limb nodes are best palpated from behind the child, with the child sitting up. And this is usually done at the end of the respiratory system examination. Also look for tracheal tuck and tracheal deviation, and whether there are any other neck swellings, such as cystic hygroma or thyroid swelling. Then we can start with the inspection of the chest. Assess the respiratory rate where we count for one minute, and the resting respiratory rate is taken while the child is quiet. Look at the shape of the chest, whether there is any chest deformity or asymmetry. Some of the chest deformities that we can look out for are, for example, pectus excavatum, such as shown in this picture here, where the chest is inwards. Or pectus carinatum, is the sternum is facing outwards. Any hyperinflation of the chest, or what we call as barrel chest, which is shown in this lower picture. Also look for Harrison's sulcus and rachitic rosary. Look at all the sides of the chest, the front and the back, for any presence of scars, and also check whether there is any chest recession, such as intercostal recession, subcostal or suprasternal recession, that could indicate respiratory distress. Next, palpation of the chest. Start with palpation on the anterior chest, then move to the back. So for palpation of the chest, we can assess the chest expansion. This is usually performed in children more than 5 years old. So first, observe the general chest expansion by asking the child to take deep breaths in and out. And then the examiner place both of the hands with the fingers holding onto the child's lateral chest wall, as shown in this picture here, and the abducted thumbs meeting in the midline of the chest. The examining thumbs should be held slightly lifted off the child's chest to allow the free movement in chest expansion. And for the landmark for examination of chest expansion, for anterior, the thumbs are placed at the level of the nipples, whereas for posterior, the thumbs are placed at the T10 level. After palpation, we move on to percussion of the chest. This is not routinely performed in infants, and we should explain the procedure to the child, for example, saying, I am going to make your chest sound like a drum before we do the percussion. So the normal percussion technique would be percussing the right middle finger. The percussing right middle finger strikes the middle phalanx of the left middle finger, placed along the respective intercostal space, and tap twice at each side, shown in this picture here. This is how we do percussion. So where do we percuss? These are the sides of percussion, shown on the anterior chest wall and the posterior chest wall. So first, we percuss the anterior chest wall, where we percuss at the sides 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and also at the side of the chest, which is 9 and 10. 
chest wall. After percussing the anterior chest wall, we move to percuss the posterior chest wall, where there are eight points to percuss as well. So interpretation of the percussion note, it can be resonant, which is normal because there is air in the lungs. However, if it is hyper-resonant, it suggests pneumothorax. If the percussion note is dull, it suggests consolidation of the lung, and stony dull will suggest pleural effusion, where there is pleural fluid, fluid present. Next, and lastly, we do auscultation of the chest, where we use the diaphragm of the stethoscope. Listen over the same areas for at least two breath cycles. So these are the sites, same as the site of percussion, we auscultate on these areas. First, the anterior chest wall, and then the posterior chest wall. So the normal breath sounds would be the vesicular breath sounds, where there is low pitch, rustling sound with inspiratory phase, and then followed by a continuous, quieter and shorter expiratory phase. So these are the different breath sounds that we may be able to hear. Vesicular breath sounds are normal. If there is absence of breath sound, it could be due to pleural effusion. If there is decreased vesicular breath sounds, there might be lung collapse. So depending on which zone there is decrease in vesicular breath sounds, it might be dead lock collapse, the lung lock. So if there is bronchial breath sounds, it suggests lung consolidation. And if there are added sounds such as ronchi, crackles, or pleural rub, there might be other explanation. So for ronchi, it is a high-pitched musical sound heard when there is partial obstruction or narrowing of the bronchi and bronchioles. And the maximum intensity is during the expiratory phase, which is prolonged. So that is for ronchi. Whereas for crackles, which is also known as crepitations, it is non-musical sound and generally heard during inspiration. And it, there are two types of crepitations, which are the fine crepitation or coarse crepitation. So fine crepitation would suggest to it to be more likely to be pulmonary edema or fibrosing alveolitis, whereas coarse crepitation suggests bronchiectasis. That's all for this video. Thank you.